make your preparations properly. Get your best units. Literally your best units. Don't be afraid to make some hard decisions, but I don't have to because everyone here is pretty overpowered. But do make your decisions about who's coming along and uh, who's going to be paired up with who. It's a very important battle that you don't want to get wrong. Let's see, with Annette, Linhart, Ash, Ignatz, and I guess with Sylvain, we'll go with Manuela. If anyone doesn't have a battalion, for any reason, that you've forgotten to take it off, I'd give them one now. The only exception, in this case, would be Felix, because he does better without a battalion. Make sure everyone's got pretty good inventory. They're not going to lose anything to a broken weapon in the middle of the fight. Everyone is good to go. And let's begin. The victory condition is to defeat all enemy commanders, and the defeat conditions are the usual all your units fall in battle. I'm gonna skip this scene to avoid spoilers. Alright, now, this battle will take place in two parts. If you haven't already seen the map, I suggest you do. This is going to be the exact copy of the Battle of the Eagle and Lion that you did way back in the first half of the game, during White Clouds. On the lower left hand side, you've got the, well I would say the Black Eagle House, but this is really the Imperial Army, led by none other than Edelgard. There's Hubert right there. In the middle, you have the same Ballista that was in the middle of, well, Ballista, there's only one of them, that was in the middle of the map. You can take this if you want, it doesn't make too much of a difference. If you're higher level than the rest of the enemies. If, if not, you want to take off this Imperial General as soon as you can. On the lower well, right hand side corner, you've got the Alliance. There's Claude. Not too many people over there, you should be fine. But this is, no matter what, this is going to be a long battle. So be aware of that. Now I'm just going to have Dimitri make his way down. What's my strategy? And in fact, I'm actually going to have everyone What's move the their way, make their way down, and I'm actually going to un dismount people off of their horses. You're going to see why I'm doing this in a bit. The only exception, of course, is going to be Ingrid. Ingrid will stay flying. I am prepared. Move up. Set is. Now, I realize that I've overleveled a lot of my characters, but that doesn't make this battle any less difficult. You just have to know what you're doing at all times. Mounted units, advance. Now, if you get hit by that ballista, or ballista, again, there's only one, I don't know why I'm using plural, you're going to get hit for a pretty decent amount of damage and that unit won't be able to move. That's very, very important. So as soon as you can, and I literally mean as soon as you can, get to that ballista. Also take care of these mounted units on the side. You really don't want to engage with them at the moment. Just like that. Now I'm just gonna have Mercedes move up slightly. She's a Gremory, which is why this 
Or actually, I really don't understand too much. Oh, in this case, it's not her movement that was sealed. It's just her ability to do anything useful, which is not much better. <laughs> Well, something something gets sealed if they get hit is basically the bottom line, and it's not good, especially if it's someone like your mages. Okay, let's hope Ash gets a lucky shot. But he didn't get a lucky shot. Oh well. Could move up two, and that'll be everyone. Ash got a poke. There will be even more. Mercedes is still sealed, which, as you can see, poses a huge problem. But I won't let that bother me right now. Now I'll have Byleth and Felix continue to make their way around the other end. Dimitri is going to use this opportunity Too weak for this world. smack that archer off. Now I'm actually going to have Ash move up, take control of the blister. I won't have him target anyone in particular just yet, but you'll notice that even though he's got free range, it's mostly over the Imperial Army. There's Hubert. Now Hubert's actually really powerful, and you can actually take him out with just the Ballista. So as long as Ash keeps his distance and is guarded, he should have no problems there. I'm only going to have Dimitri. Guard him right now. I'm gonna cover him. And nobody's fool. Was it any Sedis is still gonna be at the side. I'm gonna have Flane be a little bit offensive. Take out that knight. There are enemies in the center. Is that it? Notice Hubert's strength. Again, even though my characters are over leveled. And I may be playing on normal casual where I am a scrub, but uh, that doesn't change the fact that Hubert is going to be a huge problem throughout the battle if he's not handled correctly. I'm not too worried about Ash. <laughs> now, if you didn't engage the Alliance, or even if you did, now is the time that the Alliance is going to start moving in. But that doesn't really matter at this point, because my main obstacle right now is the Empire. If I didn't take care of the Empire, or if I wasn't going to take care of the Empire at first, the units would just rush in and overpower me. And then I'd have to deal with their constant ballista attacks, which are really annoying. Let's have aid go on against aid. No need to work. All talk and no act. I can always depend on you. By doing that, I've now pretty much blocked off, off that My duty fortress knight, so he can't get through as easily. Those who went up the hill will pay with their life. Right, now the moment that happens, or what Edelgard says that. It usually happens after that assassin you killed, or the assassin who made the exclamation gets killed. That's the main reason I didn't actually start charging everyone up on this, uh, shall I say, 
blister cross. Ironically, Ash himself, or whoever the archer is in this case, is unharmed. So he could stay on that. He, or if you have another archer like Bernadetta or Ignatz, can stay on this square however long he wants and there won't be any damage. Now that being said, uh, the Imperial soldiers are not immune to this effect either, which is somewhat of a convenient bonus. Now I'm actually going to have my horsemen mount their horses back. Mercedes now has full, co full control over her spells again. So now let me heal. I probably should, so she could get some health back. Oops. I thought I had a better range. Whatever, not the point. I got a lucky critical in that situation. Normally, I'm not nearly as lucky. Don't worry too much about the alliance right now. Not that they're not going to be a concern, but if you move everyone properly, They won't be too big of a concern. Having said, now's not the time to keep ignoring them. So while I have most of my forces put on the offense, now Mercedes can get an actual. Everyone else will continue their assault. I aim for greatness. Now, Ingrid will never be affected as long as she's flying, so that will be good enough for us. Now, there's that demonic beast that I've got to deal with, but now I'm in a better position to deal with him. Now, now this demonic beast in question is weak to spears, so a good smack from the lance will break that square. The follow up from the neck should whack off a health bar. Things look bad, of course, but just keep going. Those dark mages are extremely powerful. So watch yourself. The alliance isn't too bad, but again, don't you don't have to engage them right away. They only start coming to the fore a little bit later. They have a lot of archers, so if they get the square or the ballista, they'll start engaging people a lot more now, which you don't want because they'll be shooting it at you. Which is no fun.
Let's see. I need to take out that beast, and that's got better magic. Just actually now, just have Dimitri get out of the range of that beast. We have Ingrid now, Harry, who anyone else coming up the range. Ash is in too much of a precarious position at this point. I didn't get a lucky crit, but oh well, my luck had to come to an end at some point. This could turn the tides. Gonna Felix come in now. It's meant to be. A striking display. Now, no one is going to touch Flane, which is very helpful. Or at least not yet. As experienced as seen by the graph, no one was targeting her in particular. Mercedes is going to stick with the group, with the group going towards Edelgard. Now I know what you're thinking, it's weird that I split the team like this, but because I left Ash at the at the Ballista, I can't actually abandon him because that would just make things worse. So you're actually alive, Teach. Anyway. Now I know Claude's stats don't look that impressive, but you also have to remember that that was against a really powerful Byleth. It was almost about Let's say, what, 53 advanced. minus 35. He was basically 18 levels higher, and he was still able to do a solid 18 damage. With accuracy scores that actually aren't that pitiful. Even Edelgard, who is the same level as Claude, is going to be a huge threat. Now Ash gets a critical. Let's think carefully. Now I'm actually gonna have Dimitri finish off Edelgard because it's not optimal for her to keep standing around. I'm not interested and I have I'm sure all of the people and she will be finished off by a critical. Now I actually got pretty lucky in this case because I rushed Dimitri, I must and I could afford to do so because she was at, he was at the level he was. If this was anyone else, I probably couldn't do that. Now now that the alliance is tor coming towards us, I can now just take out Claude. This wouldn't be possible if I didn't have anyone moving back to handle the alliance. Also, just needed them to get off of Ash, so they didn't swarm the tower and start shooting their own arrows at us. Since the mission is just to take out the commanders, I have no need to let anyone else in the range of Claude. I'll just finish him off here. He's finished with a critical. Yeah, I, I thought. We had... I can't afford to. And that is to war at Grander. The walkthrough complete. It is a very long battle, so just a recap of the summary. Pay attention to where the Empire and Alliance forces are. I chose to make my way towards the Empire first because they posed a far bigger threat, but eventually Claude will start making his way towards you. It's perfectly okay to ignore the Alliance for a while, just make sure you take out the Empire troops. Uh, make sure that if you are going to take the Blista, only one archer is going to be on there and you can keep him on the square but also a flying unit, preferably, to defend him. So when Edelgard sets fire to the 
ballista area, you're not hurt. And then eventually, as you get close, as the alliance gets closer, send some people back to take out Claude, and just keep focusing on Edelgard. It's a bit of a balancing act. You're gonna have to get some practice to get it down if you don't have high-level characters. But that is the walkthrough in a nutshell. If you liked this walkthrough, please do subscribe. There'll be more videos like this in the future. Other than that, if you've been with me thus far, thank you so much for watching. And look, I hope to see you next time.